Hi YouTuber, this video is going to be regarding to the Mighty Mule Gate Opener 500 series that can be applied to the 250 as well as the 352. I have so many time problem with the motherboard on this circuitry, is this thing, and I change them multiple times. The cost of this thing is a little over $150. Also, it does have a sensor inside the arm, uh, optical sensor that is counting the number of the revolution. Uh, that is going to go back to, and that is over $20, $25 too. So I redesigned the circuitry to make them a little more robust. And hopefully if there's anything goes wrong on them, it's going to be much cheaper to be, uh, uh, repair. I will show you guys how this thing is working, and then I'm just going to go through the circuitry. Uh, let's just turn them on. Now the door is getting open. This is the timer right there. I have two timers, one for the opening, one for the closing. Timer must be set for the longer time that the door getting open. The thing that is going to stop them is going to be limit switch inside the arm. Okay, to stop, timer still is going, but the arm stop. That's the way that it's supposed to be. Now, the door is completely open. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, close the door or the gate. Again, the timer set up for 30 seconds. The arm start extending. And the thing that is gonna stop it is gonna be the limit switch that I don't have them in here. I install them on the door. Right now I bypass the, that limit switch and the timer is going to stop the arm from overextending. See, when you get to the end of the countdown on 30 seconds, it's going to stop. So now let me show you some other feature on this door. Now if I go ahead and open the door and press again, open the door, it's going to stop. If I open the door, and press close the door. We just have both of this. It's gonna change the direction. So right now I can change the direction with pressing A or B. That is gonna be for the closing and opening. But if I press the same button again, it's gonna stop. So when am I, for instance, opening the door? Just like this. If I press the A again, it's gonna stop. Now, let me just explain to you how the circuitry does work. I use the, you do need a remote with a two channel. I got the four channel because the cost was almost the same. So this is the board. I built a little board right in here, plexiglass. I put the two timer and the additional circuitry for the current, uh, checking the current on the circuitry for safety feature. It didn't work for right now. I bypassed them and it functioned as I was showing it to you guys. Everything is installed on top of this plexiglass. I can just remove them. You know, it has a magnet in bottom of it that is holding them in a place. Also, I have a quick disconnect right in here that I can, without the tools, I can remove this and then do working on it and putting them back if I wanted to. As you can see right now, the display is showing something. You can just shut them off to use it to saving the power. Still, the timer, it does work. It just doesn't show the display. Uh, the, when the system is in a standby, both of this timer, include of the uh, remote, they pulling something around 30 million. The original circuitry, that motherboard, and the remote board, uh, that they, the remote circuitry that they do have, is pulling something at about uh, 45 or so. So this circuitry is pulling less current while it's in a standby mode. Well, these relays, each one are 12 volt and 30 amp, double pole, double throw. I do have them right in here. I ordered them through the uh, Amazon.com. You can buy this one through the uh, eBay for $5 each. This is the remote that I use, four channel remote. It just came with a two of this remote control. You can have extra remote control for $2.50 and you can have up to the 16 of this remote control paired with your receiver. This is a schematic and I can show it to you actually in my laptop too. This is the schematic that I designed. I'm just going to go a little through the details of this schematic. As you can see, it does have a two timer, timer A and timer B. 
is related to the uh, relay that is going to open or the close. This is the receiver board that it does have a four channel, but I'm just using two channel of them. The green area that you see is going to be a current sensor that it didn't work. And as you can see, it just have a power supply connected to it. I just bypassed that one. This is the way that I'm just going to hold it in here for a second that you guys be able to uh, stop it and take a look at the circuitry. It does have a breaker, five amp breaker in the bottom. And that's about it. These are going to be the component that I used. Again, the remote and the relay, a two timer. This is going to be the cost of total cost of the circuitry. If you want to put them together, it's $72. You need some quick disconnect and connect the different type, round one, flat one. They call them spat or quick disconnect and connect. The RF remote is $14. Battery charger that you need for the solar is a $12. Double pull, double throw, uh, relay 30 amp, these are $5 each. Circuit breaker that you're gonna install right in here is gonna be uh, $4. And timer module, as I show it to you guys, this timer module's right in here. Each one is about uh, $8, how much was $7. Limit switch that I didn't show it to you guys. That I installed them on my door and the gate. I will show it to you guys later. It's ten dollars, and all of this quick connect and disconnect that you buy them. You can buy them from Amazon or anywhere else. And the wire is going to cost you about eight dollars. This is the uh, current relay uh, module that it didn't work, so I didn't cut the cost of this uh, board for this circuitry. The other thing that I want to tell you guys: if you replace the last board that is right in here, that it doesn't do anything with a timer you can have this feature when the door is open set the timer and then uh, after the time get expired for instance two minutes or one minute the door automatically get closed i didn't show that one in the schematic if there's any interest on it message me i'm going to tell you how you can connect them again each one of these uh, boards cost about seven dollars the most expensive part of this circuitry is the remote control and the receiver that cost about fourteen dollars so i do have another design that has a more feature on them it has a safety feature if somebody is in between hitting the door the door is going to stop as well as the, it does have the timer for closing the door in case if you want them when it's completely open after a certain time that I will going to show you guys later. The reason that I'm showing this video right now is just showing the progress. How do I improve my design for the better? Okay, I'm done with the second design. And um, the second design I uh, utilize using the Arduino microcontroller. Uh, you can use the Arduino Nano as I'm showing right in here, or you can use Arduino Uno. Either one going to work with a sketch that I write. On the first uh, design that I do had, you didn't need to do any programming. It was just setting the time. And on this one, uh, I have a sketch that you have to load them up in the Arduino uh, microcontroller before you be able to use it. On this, uh, if the system is in a standby, the amount of the current when you are using the Arduino Uno or the Nano complete the power that is being used during the standby is pulling about 52 milliamp so is the current is a little higher than the first design but we do have more feature on this design the two feature that is being added on this design one is going to be the very important one is a current sensor is being added on this so while the gate getting open or closed if you're hitting something and the current spike is going to disengage the arm the second one is this wire right in here. If you are connecting it, it does have a 120 second uh, timeout after the gate is completely open, 120 seconds later to start closing the gate. Uh, I will demonstrate how this thing does work. Just like the first design, if you press the one button, it's gonna uh, open or close A or B. And then if you press the other one, it's gonna toggle going to move to the other direction if you're pressing the same button again it's going to stop the gate 
Again, I do have this light bulb right in here that is representing the auto latch or electromagnetic lock that you do have. So when the door uh, try to get open at the, at the start for the about five to 10 seconds, you get a power to it to un unlock the latch. And then uh, when you close it up, this is not gonna get engaged. Just that's gonna work for it while you're opening the gate. So uh, let me just demonstrate how this thing does work. Uh, make sure again, like the first design, when you're getting your remote control, it's two channel you need. I bought the four because it was the same price. They are function as a momentarily. Momentarily means while you're holding the button, the relay is engaged. When you release, you know, the relay get disengaged. Now, let me just show you guys how this thing does work. I'm gonna sh uh, show you the operation, uh, open the gate completely, go to the schematic. While I'm explaining to you guys the schematic, the two minutes is gonna get expired. The gate start uh, getting closed and then I'm gonna stop it and show you the feature of the current, how the current, if the gate hitting something, how it's gonna get stopped. So for right now, the gate is almost halfway open. I'm just going to open them up completely. The arm going to start extracting till the micro switch inside the arm stop the motor. When you opening them up, I do have another micro switch that is installed on the door, and I will show it to you guys later how that is going to work. As you can see right now, this uh, microcontroller is loosely hanging right in here because I was going to show you the relay shield that is in the bottom, but I'm going to use a double-sided tape to uh, put in this thing right in here and fix them in a place. Uh, the other thing on this design, I have to use a power supply 5 volt converter, 12 to 5 volt converter through the USB to powering up the Arduino Uno Arduino uh, shield relay as well as this uh, little current uh, module that I have right in here. So uh, now the timer started a while ago for the 120 second and when it get expired uh, the gate is start closing. Let's just go back through the schematic. Let's see if I can pull the schematic out. Okay, this is a schematic. I'm just gonna hold it for a second that you guys can see them better. On the right hand side of the schematic, it shows all of the wire that it came out of the cable right there that I'm just using five of them. The other two that is for the counter, it doesn't have no application for me. The brown wire that I'm showing right in here that it goes to the pin eight of the Arduino. If you disconnect in it, you are not going to have auto uh, closure. If you are uh, connecting it, then you have auto closure. So when the gate is completely open, not half away, completely open, 120 seconds later, uh, the gate is going to start uh, closing up. Uh, this is going to be the microcontroller that I do have Arduino. You can use, as I said, Nano or you can use Uno. If you are going to use the Uno, you are going to buy something like this. In the bottom is a micro, uh, Arduino Uno uh, and in the top is a relay shield for the Uno. It has four relay. You just need to use two of them. The reason that I use the Nano because it has a smaller footprint and it fits in there much better. As you can see right now, the two minutes is expired and the gate is start closing up. Now let's just go back to the schematic again. Uh, right now, I do have the block that it shows in the top is just for the remote. My remote has a four. I just use two of them. I explained if they supposed to be momentarily mode or function. The second block that it shows is a uh, current sensor module for the Uno or uh, you can use them for Uno or uh, any Arduino. Uh, that is going to be ACS712 module 20 amp. They are coming in a 5 and 30 amp too. Uh, and the way that it's being connected to the uh, Arduino is going to be using the 5 volt supply ground and you have to connect them to the A0 pin. On the Arduino, I use the pin 2 and 3 for opening and closing and pin 8 for the auto closure. 
and then you do have this power supply that I explained to you guys is a 5 volt supply converter exactly look like this you connect them to the 12 volt and it's going to give you 5 volt out through the USB that you are using the cable goes between here and your uh, microcontroller uh, this is going to be the uh, Arduino uh, Nano when, it's, when you buy them typically coming like this that you have to assemble the solder the header pin and that would be nice if you buy one of those uh, screw shield for the nano i can show it to you guys too uh let me see if i can get that thing in here it's like this that you can just plug them in and use the screws uh, instead of just dealing with a uh, hanging wire you do need the relay shield. This is the relay shield that I bought for the uh, Nano. Make sure the relay shield that you buy in has the activated with a positive signal, not the negative. It must get the positive pulse to get activated. This is the shield for the two relay shield that I'm using for the Arduino Nano. Now let's just go back through the sketch. Of course, uh, I mean, it, in top of this, it's said right now that I set up the timing for the 120 second and the current sensor is being uh, triggered at uh, 4 amp. That is going to be changeable inside this sketch. This is the sketch. Of course, in this sketch, I do have a display too. I'm just going to remove it because you don't need to have a display. Just too much stuff on it. Uh, it shows it set up for the 120 second. This 9000 number right in here represented if the 120 second. If you want the uh, higher time, you change that 9000 to the different number, higher number and lower, de definitely going to change to the lower. This is the trip uh, limit that I put for the 4 amp. Uh, you can just change that one to the any value that you want. Typically, the arm when it doesn't have any load is pulling about one amp, two amp, and based on the size of the door that you do have and how well the hinge has been lubricated, it might pull higher current. I don't know how high it can go, but it's four amp is a too much current. Uh, in the top of this sketch for the people that they do have the exit sensor what is exit sensor uh, when you approach into the gate with your vehicle uh, you don't need to use the remote uh, the gate is automatically going to get open if you do have such a sensor i show you guys what what are the color of the wire that is coming out of that sensor and where you have to be connecting them to uh, of course this sketch is about i don't know uh, 100, 289 line a bunch of this line is for the display I'm going to post this thing without the display I'm not the the sketch that I'm going to post in my YouTube it will not going to have the display on it liquid crystal display now I'm going to show you guys how the feature of the current going to work on this system let's just assume right now the gate is completely closed and I'm just going to try to open them up and let's just imagine in between it's going to hit something uh, to simulate that i'm just going to grab the arm that is extracting and holding them tight and don't let it extract so that it causing the current goes up of course you can hear the sound of the motor is going to be changed because it's getting under the load now let's just try that i'm going to grab it and hold it Okay, as you can see, I hold it tight and the current goes to the 4 amp and stop the uh, gate. I don't think I have anything else. To... The only thing that it left that I didn't talk about it is going to be one when I take this thing to the property and connect them to the gate. I will show you how is the macro switch is working for the closing side as well as the solar charger. I'm gonna show you guys how did I manage those. I already installed those, so they are not in here that I can show you guys. Uh, second thing, as I was mentioning, uh, 
and the code when I write the code uh, I add the liquid crystal this is gonna be look like this to this code I write some code for it that it was showing the how much current being pulled by the motor while the gate is getting open or closed and where it's gonna be the uh, limit trigger point is as well as the how much time left before the gate get closed uh, that is gonna be too much code and this display using about 21 milliamp current so I'm just gonna eliminate those codes uh, before I posting this uh, uh, sketch on the YouTube. If anybody interested, this uh, display costs you about nine dollars and it's a liquid crystal and using the I square C communication with a, or uh, Arduino, uh, you can add them up, but you have to disconnect it whenever you are not using them because it's using about 21 million. That's almost uh, a little less than half of the current that it been used the system during the standby. Uh, so I will gonna eliminate this part of the code related to the liquid crystal that I will post this sketch on the YouTube. Now I put the current meter that it shows in a standby how much current being pulled by the Arduino and the rest of the circuitry is about 53 milliamp and also I secure the uh, Arduino Nano in a place now it's not dangling anymore uh, and one more thing that I forgot to mention on the second design I changed the circuit breaker to the regular fuse this is much faster acting uh, fuse and these are the regular fuse that it been used on the car is a 10 amp and it be connected with a two quick connect to the circuitry since in uh, both of the design that I do have with a uh, regular timer or Arduino I, will, I am using the macro switch that is inside the arm you have to make sure the macro switch it does work the little board that is inside the uh, arm I changed them multiple times when I was using the original circuitry with a motherboard but neither one of those times the problem was with the macro switch the problem mainly came from the optical sensor that it counting the number of the revolution so how you can check that macro switch is very easy what you need to do just screw this arm all the way in you just screw it all the way in use the multimeter and go for the three wire that is coming out of the arm and typically they connected to this portion of the motherboard they are color coded the color of those are going to be green orange and brown when the arm is completely extracted as it is right now the connection between the green and brown must be made and they're going to be short and then if you unscrew this thing couple turn and do that same measurement this time the connection between the green and brown is going to get open and connection between the green and orange is going to be made that is the way that you can check the macro switch without uh, disassembling the whole arm. I need to add a couple more uh, notes in here. One is about loading the sketch into the Arduino Nano. Uh, I had some uh, difficulty using the MacBook that has a Mojave 10.14. Uh, software on it regarding that I went and I add a driver for the Arduino Nano I couldn't load them up you don't have any problem with the loading the uh, sketch into the Arduino Uno but I couldn't do it on the Arduino Nano so I use a PC to load the sketch into the Arduino Nano the second thing if you guys using the uh, screw shield for the Arduino Nano make the life much easier if you adding any periphery that i add right now for instance the display with a four wire that is using i square c you can just for the connection you can just screw those wire in without much of trouble also if you do have a multiple of this uh, uh, or you know like this this one doesn't have the display uh, sketch on it and that one have them you might have a multiple sketch on a different of this board these boards are relatively very inexpensive these are about three dollars you can just pop them out and drop the other one in uh, 
Uh, on this video also, I'm going to show you guys how fast this system is going to boot up and also what the display is going to show. The display, if you are set up your auto closure with closing this uh, wire that I already explained about it, it shows the 120 second or whatever you're setting up in your sketch, it shows on a display. I set them up 120 second, it shows 120 second. Also, it shows the trip limit that I set them up at the four second, as well as the how much current is being drawn by the motor while they get getting open or closed. So, I'm just gonna show you guys right now, the gate is a bit uh, left to get completely open. I'm just gonna open them up completely, and then you can see uh, how long does it take the system to boot up and what the display is gonna show. Turn the system on and open the gate completely. As you can see, it shows the current that is being drawn by the motor currently. And when the gate get completely open, the countdown is going to be stopped. It's going to go to the zero. When it get to the zero, it will going to close the gate. If you do have this wire disconnected, then the countdown stay at 120. Again, if you are going to go to the sketch and change the timeout or the trip limit, those are going to be reflected on the display. Finally, I installed the uh, gate opener. That's going to be the way that is going showing right now. Uh, I do have two wire that is coming from solar charger that I'm going to show it to you guys. These are these two wire. I put a fuse in between 10 amp fuse and then I connect them to the battery. The two wires and then the two wire that it used to go to the uh, magnetic latch that you do have. I changed the cable with a three wire because I do have a macro switch in the other end that it need to use the one of those wire. I'm going to show you guys first the solar panel. How did I manage the charger for it? And then I'm going to show you the macro switch and how the door is going to operate. I installed this. solar charger about two years ago is working very good and it's the way that it's been installed right now is preventing of the water to get to it because it has an angle on that solar panel it doesn't let the water get into it so the two wires coming inside of it from the solar panel and then the two wire output of it is going to go directly to the battery as you can see it does have a display too as i said it's working for the last two years and it doesn't have no problem so this is for the solar panel. Now I'm just going to show you the macro switch that I installed on the other end. This end when the gate getting closed is the stopping the uh, door. This is going to be the way that it's been installed. You see it has a lots of room to play. Right under the magnetic latch. That's the way that I installed them. And for it stopping it, I installed the screws on the pole that is adjustable. Uh, you can adjust them, bringing them in and out. That is going to meet the best. You want to set this thing somehow when the gate get closed uh, and hitting this to stop the door. If it playing, you don't want the gate keep getting on and off. For I have a, a timer on it. It's going to be off. But for that that period of the uh, couple second that it left, if the gate start moving back and forth, you don't want to keep getting on and it's coming farther in. So uh, you have to do the good adjustment on this thing. I will show you guys right now uh, when I'm closing the gate how this thing going to work. Gate is coming and. When it's hitting that, it's going to stop it. I'm just going to open the gate now. While it's going back, I'm just going to change the direction. No problem. The only thing that I have to remind you guys, uh, I have to change the... Let me just change the direction again. The 4 amp uh, current limit that I used to have, I changed them to the 6.5. It's just dependent to the size of your gate and how good is your hinges are. 
so let me just wait till this thing stop okay now I'm gonna close it and while it's getting closer I'm gonna hold the gate to see if it's hitting something how it's gonna act As you can see, the gate is going to stop. Now I'm just going to completely close it and show you guys one more time from inside how this switch is going to work, how the macro switch on this end is going to work. As you can see, it has a lots of room to play. This macro switch costs you about $13 from Amazon or you can buy it for about five, six dollars through the eBay. It's supposed to be waterproof, so you shouldn't be worried about it. And the way that those two wires get connected to this, you are using the normally closed. You're using the common and normally closed. So when the gate, it stops with that screws, it's gonna open the switch and stop the gate. One more time, let me open the door, open the gate. So that's the way that the system works. I think I already mentioned when the wires coming down from the solar panel, make sure that you put a fuse before uh, you connect them to the battery. That's it.